here is a spicy tuna appetizer that doesn't require you to sacrifice your sushi principles because it's not sushi. The juxtaposition of creamy tuna and crunchy tempura are all here, but true to its roots, it's plated like a contemporary American dish, not a bastardized Japanese one. Let's prep our nori sheets by cutting them in half, then in half again, and then cut them into squares. We'll fry them in tempura batter and turn them into the most delicious vehicle for our creamy tuna. For tempura batter, we'll need 142 grams of unbleached all-purpose flour. Since we'll need to sift the flour, I weigh it right in the sifter set of our plate. Just don't forget to tear the scale after placing the plate and sifter on it. Add one teaspoon of diamond crystal kosher salt or half a teaspoon of table salt and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Sift the dry ingredients over 354 grams of ice cold water. Don't forget to include the flour that dropped onto the plate and whisk to combine. Don't get carried away. Stop mixing when the batter still has lumps. They'll help give your tempura crunch and texture. I'm not normally a fan of deep frying because of the mess involved, but in this case, we only need one inch of oil because our pieces are so small. Heat the oil in a small pot with tall sides over medium-high heat until you get to 350 Fahrenheit. Dunk three or four squares of nori in batter and place in oil. Dunk the squares one at a time. You don't want them to sit in batter and get soggy. The oil will get very bubbly. That's why you don't want to use a skillet for this. The sides wouldn't be tall enough. Cook the nori until the noise subsides, flipping them to the other side when they start to get golden. It only takes a minute or so to get them to this done stage, so be vigilant. Remove them to paper towels using small tongs or a slotted spoon. When you fished all the pieces out, you can fry more squares. These little nori chips are terribly addictive, so be careful. Don't eat them all before you have a chance to prep your tuna. For our creamy tuna mixture, we'll need the white and pale green part of a couple of scallions. Let's cut them in half lengthwise. Then in half again and cut crosswise into tiny pieces. Let's cut tuna lengthwise into a quarter inch thick pieces. Then cut the flat pieces into strips and cut them crosswise into a quarter inch dice. Make sure to glide the knife through the fish. Don't just press down or you'll get stuck on connective tissue. Now use the mincing motion to get the pieces even smaller. Place your guiding hand on top of the knife and go back and forth through the tuna until the pieces are very small, but still distinct. You don't want the mixture to be pasty. Repeat this process with the remaining tuna pieces and get everything into a bowl. Add a good dollop of mayo. I use Hellman's full fat mayo, but you can use whatever mayo tastes good to you. A squirt of sriracha hot sauce a drizzle of soy sauce and minced scallions. Mix it all up and adjust all the ingredients until the mixture tastes good to you. While editing this video, I realized that a drizzle of toasted sesame seed oil would also be a delicious addition. There's no right or wrong here. One person might like it creamier, another spicier. This is not something you need a recipe for, you just need your taste buds. Let's scoop the seeds out of an English cucumber and make paper-thin strips using a peeler. Lay the strips out on your work surface and roll them up. Then pull the center out a tad to make a cucumber curl. You can keep these curls in an airtight container in the fridge for a few hours. Scoop the tuna mixture out with a soup spoon. Then scoop it out with another soup spoon. Keep going back and forth between the two spoons until you form a nice oval. This is called a canal shape 
and it's a useful plating technique used for pâtés, butter, ice cream and many other creamy things. I'm going to shape my tuna into three canal, but of course that's completely optional. You could use a cylinder mold, an ice cream scoop or eat it right out of this bowl with nori chips. For Super Bowl Sunday, that would be much more appropriate than my dainty little presentation here. Add the cucumber curls between the tuna. Stick the nori chips into each canal. And scatter julienne scallions around. Let's see what we've got here. This is a knockout first course with the creamy, crunchy and refreshing elements coexisting in perfect harmony. Next week we are breaking down a whole hamachi and making a wicked hamachi crudo. So please don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel and if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.